Hello, this is Michael Ivaliotis. In this video, I will share with you a technique that I use when I want to be selective of how LabVIEW child classes load into memory. The technique I use is called the factory pattern. The factory pattern implementation in LabVIEW is one of many object-oriented programming design patterns that have been adapted from other languages to fit the LabVIEW model. Specifically, the factory pattern allows us to dynamically load a class into memory and create an instance of a child class on demand. To see why this is important to us, let's take a look at a previous hardware emulation example presented in VI Shots video episode number two. This VI presents an application which calls instrumentation hardware. It also calls an emulation class, which allows us to run the application in emulation mode. Let's take a quick look. If I run the application, if I'm in emulation mode, I can initialize the equipment, take a voltage measurement, and clean up the instrument. Let's take a look at the class hierarchy. As you can see here, we have a DMM parent class, and we have two child classes, one called Emulator and one called Agilent 34401. Let's look at the VI hierarchy. Currently, the VI hierarchy shows that the Emulator class and the Agilent class are both loaded into memory alongside the DMM class, which is the parent. The reason why they're loaded, all of these classes are loaded into memory is because if we look at the block diagram, we'll see that the uh, class object is physically located on the diagram of the main VI. So we have the DMM emulator class located here, and we have the Agilent 34401 class located here. Now the reason why we do this is because it's easy. We can just create some kind of selector here and select which child class we want to wire up to the parent class. This means that every time our application executes, it'll load both all the ch child classes into memory, even though for any given instance, we only will need one class. In most runs of this application, we probably don't ever need to use the emulator class. The emulator class is probably something that we only require when we're doing debugging or uh, when you were trying to do a demonstration. Now let's take a look at a different implementation which allows us to selectively load the appropriate child classes into memory only when we need them. The VI on the front panel looks the same, but on the diagram, we've replaced our class objects with this VI called load class. If we look at the class hierarchy, we'll see that LabVIEW only sees one class in memory, so it only displays one class, and that's the DMM parent class. And in the VI hierarchy, we'll see that we only have the DMM parent class shown as well. Let's run this VI to see what happens. When the VI runs, still only the one parent class is shown. If we do initialize instrument, we'll see that now the child classes, or actually the emulation class, is loaded into memory, and LabVIEW sees the emulation class as a child of DMM parent. Take voltage measurement, that works as normal. Clean up instrument, that works. Now let's execute the Agilent initialize. So initialize that. Of course, that gives us an error as expected. But here we'll see that the Agilent class is now loaded into memory. Let's take a look at the diagram to see the implementation of this. If we open up our load class VI, we'll see that we have some code here which allows us to load the class, load the child class from disk. And that's pretty much the secret to this implementation. This VI here, called get LabVIEW class default value, is a new VI that was introduced recently in LabVIEW. It's located under the cluster class and variant palette over here. What this does basically is on its front panel, it has the generic LabVIEW object. You specify a path to, you, to your .lv class file, and that class gets loaded onto the generic LabVIEW object wire, as you can see here. So once the class gets loaded with this VI, it's now in memory. Now we can't use the LabVIEW generic object wire because we need to use the parent class in our application. So we use a two more specific class function and we take our parent class and cast the generic LabVIEW object into the DMM class. So the DMM class exists here and on this wire is traveling the child class that was loaded from disk. Now here up front, we have uh, some code which generates the path to the LV class file. 
because what we're doing is we're taking um, the text on this enumerator, DMM emulator, converting it to string, and then taking that and generating a path out of that. So if we want to add a new child class, basically what we need to do is create the child class, put it into the appropriate, appropriately named folder, and then add that name into this list. This, of course, ties the front panel control, the control names, to our LV class name. So there is some connection there which we might not want. Of course, this is just an example. You can specify the class name uh, or the, the path to LV class file in a text file, or you can create some code that does auto discovery and just goes through the folder looking for the classes and auto populates your front panel GUI with, with that name. So there's many things that you can do here in order to make it more generic so that you don't need to edit any code down the road if you add a new child class. So using the factory pattern to load child classes is nice. Unfortunately, there is one limitation of this approach that needs to be mentioned. There is no way currently to unload a class once it has been loaded. So you should take this into consideration in your application design. Let's take a look at what needs to be done when building an application that uses dynamic loading of classes. Here I have a build specification for this application. If I open it up and look at the source files, I'll see that I have the two child classes specified in the always included. Just because these classes are shown here as included does not mean that in an executable these classes are loaded into memory. All this means uh, is that these classes are bundled together into the executable file and will exist there when LabVIEW needs to load them. Okay, so that's it. Let's summarize all this. Object controls or constants load the class into memory. So if you have objects on the front panel or the diagram of a called VI, LabVIEW will load the classes of those objects into memory. To avoid that, you can do dynamic loading of classes using the factory pattern that we saw, and it avoids memory and resource overhead. So if you don't frequently call those child classes, then using this approach allows you to have a more lightweight uh, application. And remember, when you're doing um, building of applications, you still need to add those classes into the application building process to make sure they're included into your executable. Thank you for watching this video. Remember that all the code shown is available for download on the VI Shots website. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and gave you some ideas that you can use in your own LiveView software development. Bye for now.